So hello and welcome. Thank you for joining us for this program about Zoom, a virtual meeting application that we currently use at Plano Public Library for virtual programming that you can also use to connect with the friends and family. My name is Diana and I'll be your guide for all things Zoom this afternoon. I have some experienced assistants with me today that are moderating our chat and assisting with technical support. Hannah, Sharon, and Rachel, welcome to say hi if you want. I'm Hannah, hello. 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 So they will be sharing questions you are posing with me so that I can answer them verbally and they will also be responding to you in the chat box and I can share more about that in a moment. I see a few more people have joined us. Hello and welcome. We are recording this program in order for you to view it later and to also share with others that missed this program. You're welcome to jot down notes if you'd like, but we will also share all these resources in an email afterwards. So if you don't wanna to have to track each of the links we share, don't worry about it. I will also send those to you. Sometimes it's easier to click a link than it is to write down the, high, the whole extension of a URL. So in order to make this an interactive and safe experience for the learning process, we will provide opportunities for some verbal questions and comments. In either verbal or written form, please note that we ask everyone to make respectful comments and anything beyond this may cause your immediate removal from the program. Let's get started. So first of all, if you are in this program, you made it. Hopefully you were able to get into this program without any issues. If all is good, I'm going to direct you to where you can raise your hand. And we will be using this prompt for confirmation and you can also use it if you have any questions throughout the program so that we can unmute you and let you ask your question. So if you want to look towards the bottom, I have here an icon that shows raise hand. If you're joining us with a computer, it's typically at the bottom. It might be in a slightly different space if you're joining us with a smartphone or a tablet. But if you'll go ahead and raise your hand that everything is good for you. I see a few hands. So everyone's sort of finding where their hand raising feature is. This is good. This is a good sign. At least half of you have found it. All right. Well, I'll go ahead and just lower all hands. Thank you for interacting. And then I'll take a moment to unmute you. If you need any other further assistance, we can go ahead and you can actually, you know what, I think it'll be easier. If you raise your hand, if you need any other specific assistance at this moment, go ahead and do that so that we can see the icon on and we can go ahead and unmute you so that you can ask your question. So are there any questions at this point? And if you have found your hand raising feature. Okay. And then finally, you are welcome to put any questions you may have in the chat box. You may have to look towards the very bottom of your screen. And as you'll see, there's a little chat icon. It's very small, but if you click it open, you can go ahead and submit your questions to us directly. And it looks like some of you have already been able to do that. So let's go ahead and do a system check. Everyone good to go? Okay. Hey, Diana. Mm -hmm. um, I may have missed this at the beginning. I do apologize. But um, will there be an outline of what is covered today? What type of um, resources are, are you sending out? Uh, yes. So I will show you just an objective slide here in a moment so that you know what we'll be covering here. And then afterwards, I'll share my PowerPoint and they'll have some links in there as well. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. I'll go ahead. Someone I know had just mentioned that you don't see any faces. That is a little bit by design now. Um, part of it is if I do start my video, I'll go ahead and show you briefly. Uh, you will notice that either me talking is coming straight up maybe on your screen or possibly my face. So I'll just give you a quick hello. This is my do my Plano virtual background. Hello. I'm going to go ahead and turn my video off for the rest of the program so that it's not distracting too much. And we'll talk a little bit about virtual backgrounds and all those things later. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. 
So for fun, let's try a poll so that you can see the feature and we can gauge your experience with Zoom. If you've never done a poll before, a window will pop up automatically and you can select your answer and submit. So let's go ahead and get that going. So we're asking you, what is your experience with Zoom? You may not know very much, you might know some things, you might consider yourself an expert, or you may not really be sure how, how much you really know. And we're just kind of using this as just a gauge to kind of know what questions maybe to address. And I'll just pause for a moment to let you participate. I'll go ahead and end the poll. We had 92% people in participation. So here are the poll results. So the most of you know at least something about Zoom. So that's, that's good to know. I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing the results and you might have to press close if that window is still lingering on your screen so that you can see the rest of the PowerPoint. That was our poll. So let's talk about our objectives. What will be covered? So we're, we're going to look at the differences between Zoom meetings and webinars. I'll explain a little bit more about that in a moment. How to participate. You know, when you're in a virtual environment, it's a little bit different. Using mute effectively and some other tips. And if you're going to be setting up your own program, a little bit about basic setup. And hopefully, if you've got questions at the end, we'll save time in the middle of the presentation but also at the end as well. So basically Zoom offers two different types of Zoom setups, meetings and webinars. Meetings generally are more for virtual socialization. You may see this for um, family gatherings, maybe you're having a work meeting or anything where you might have collaboration and you, you need to see everyone. Webinars, such as today's format, is more presentation, more presentation style. Uh, there will be a presenter or sometimes presenters, plural, sharing information. And I'll explain a little bit more about some key differences here in a moment too. Some other things that are important to note is that there are different roles in Zoom. And this will be the same for both meetings and webinars. So in general, Zoom defines all participants as people joining the actual space. This will include both hosts and attendees. And there's sort of a partition between the two. Panelists are those that have been invited to participate from the presentation side and therefore have different controls as say attendees. On the panelist side, there's the host, the individual who started the program, and there's also co-hosts. And these might be supporting individuals that have similar controls. So for today, I have my colleagues, Sharon, Hannah, and Rachel helping me, and myself, and we're all considered panelists, and all of you are attendees in this space. I will share, of course, these links later, but one thing I do want to note, and you can even do a Google search if you look specifically at Zoom supporting documents, is they have an incredible amount of depth to both roles in meetings and webinars. And these links have some amazing charts that really explain side by side what each role can do. So this might be something that's helpful to you. And again, I'll share these links later for you to look at and, and uh, at your own time. And if you want later, if this is a question you have specifically, we can go back to it. But I just wanna cl uh, clarify that these are documents that are available. They have nice clear charts. They explain what each role can do. Can do. Hopefully by now, you've also noticed that there are some different display settings. It might differ if you're on a computer or if you're on an iPad or a mobile phone. Again, Zoom provides some great tutorials about how you change the video layout. Um, so I'm gonna to point to you to some icons that you may be able to see. If you're joining us from a computer, typically on the upper right-hand side, there are different views. There's the gallery view and the speaker view. The gallery view at this point won't be as impactful 
because you won't, we won't have multiple cameras shown at the same time. However, if you are joining a meeting, this is something you may want to do. Rather than have the prominent speakers showing their camera directly to you, you can also see everyone together in the gallery view. In the instance of maybe you're wanting to see something like a presentation and a speaker and their face side by side, you might have to scroll up to the very top of your screen when someone is sharing their screen as I am with my PowerPoint and check those view options. And those are some side by side modes that you can do. And in between, there's usually a little toggle where you can go back and forth and you can either make the face or the presentation more prominent. So just to highlight some different options that you might have. So let's talk about meetings in Zoom. Since meetings are intended for well meetings and other forms of collaboration, there are features that can help facilitate socialization and that collaboration. For example, there are reactions that allow attendees to provide some nonverbal input. Note, the only main reaction that we have in the webinar format is the hand raising feature, but these reactions do exist within this space and I'll show you those controls here in a moment. There are also breakout rooms where different groups can be divided into virtual spaces for discussion. So an example of how we use that here in the library system is our small talk program. In most of our meetings, you're able to join with audio and video immediately without restriction. Typically, screen sharing is also an option without restrictions. Note, I say generally and typically because many of these features are dependent on how the meeting was set up. And also you can see an example of a gallery view. So all the participants in this particular meeting, you can see all their faces. And I think it's helpful to contextualize how this works. And I'm using this image to explain. For a traditional in-person meeting, you're usually sitting in a space together, such as this group sharing a table. For meetings within Zoom, it's basically the same concept, except that each participant is connecting from a different space. Also note that one of the individuals in the group has been assigned host, much in the same way someone would have called a meeting in person. Also note that the host is very much part of the crowd, so while the host has different controls, participates in the meeting very much the same way as the attendees. This slide shows you the different controls you will see from the attendee side. And again, this will be more in the meeting space. So to the left, there's your audio visual controls. There's your mute and your video, stop video portion. And I believe someone had asked about virtual backgrounds and I'll get to that in a moment, but some of these features that you might be looking for will be on this side. Towards the middle are the other ways to participate. There's a place where you can check for other participants. There's a chat box the share screen feature, there's a recording feature, and reactions like I mentioned, mentioned earlier about the different emojis. Note for the recording and meetings, typically when you click that as an attendee, it's going to send a message to the host to allow you to go ahead and record a meeting. So maybe you're the kind of person, if you're facilitating some learning, that watching a whole PowerPoint is just not going to help you. You might want to review your contact later. You might contact the host and say, I'd like to record this. So by clicking that, it sends a message to the host to give you permission to go ahead and do that. And as I shared before, not all these features may be present based on the setup of the experience. So at this point, I'll just make a quick pause. Are there any questions thus far? Nothing so far in chat. I'll let you know for sure though. Okay. And you can stop me if there's anything. Okay, well, so let's talk about webinars, the environment we are in now. Typically, setup is restricted with restricted audio and video abilities for attendees. Since this is generally more for presentations, you will most likely see a solo speaker or maybe a group of speakers. Otherwise, you may see a PowerPoint as you do now, and sometimes the speaker can show their face simultaneously. I do have a question um, in sure. chat. How can you see all of the participants in a meeting? Is that possible for an attendee? Yes, so it will depend on how it was set up. So since this is a webinar setting, we don't, we don't currently have it to where attendees can see each other. 
it's, it, it's almost like you're kind of coming in your own immersive experience separately. Um, I believe that's a default setting, setting really in Zoom. However, in meetings, yes, if you click that participants box, when you are an attendee, you should be able to see the other participants in, the, in that box with, with you. That's also key to later, and we'll talk a little bit about more using the chat box, but in some cases you might want to interact separately with people in a meeting space. With the webinar setup, because it's more presentation style, we tend to defer from that practice just to make it easier, but it is possible. Awesome. And um, I have a, another question, but maybe um, you can get to it whenever you, whenever you can. Um, would you be able to at some point show how you um, did a poll, like what you did in the beginning and how you shared the results? Is that something maybe you would have time for today? Yeah, sure. I, I probably will have to pull it off and just, I have some things at the end where I'll go into the browser and I can show you what it would look like. Um, it's kind of a good thing to mention at this point. It's a really interesting quirk about Zoom is that what I see in terms of controls and the things in the setup are gonna be different than what you see. So there's very much a, a difference in the experience um, just because it's one person presenting versus what you see as the attendee. So it is kind of crucial to think about that, but I'll be happy to show you how to find and set that up. Awesome, sounds good, thank you. Okay, cool. So we'll talk a little bit more about webinars. So here are um, so another explanation about to contextualize it. So as we showed with the meetings, you're kind of all in the same collaborative space. With the webinar, it's very similar to what it is now. So I'm hosting, and then there's another couple co-hosts with me on one side, and then there's the attendees. And again, just to kind of express the point that there is a little bit more limited interaction in this sense because it is a little bit more like a presentation. Okay. And these are the controls you'll generally see in a Zoom webinar such as today. So we have not actually set up Q&A. It's a different feature that you can do in a Zoom webinar. For us, it's to manage a question and answer session simultaneously with watching a chat box can get a little cumbersome. So it is easier for us to just put all questions there. But note, it is option that you can do. Basically, you can set it up to where any attendees can just send the panelists, so the hosts or the co-hosts, private questions um, as it's going on and they're not public. They can be private or sometimes they can be public. It just depends. Um, we felt like it was just easier to do just chat, but it is an option. It's also this similar in the sense that there's audio, audio visual controls on the left hand side and your ways to participate while limited are still sort of in the middle in the bottom if your controls. And at this point, are there any questions about controls in the Zoom webinar feature? There is one question. Um, what determines the options on the controls? Um, because you did mention that they are not always available. It will be how you set it up. And I can show you, I'll show you how Zoom does it. I'll go to their website at the end when I finish the presentation and I can show you where to find that. There's such a huge depth of what you can do within Zoom. And usually there's some that are just toggle switches where you can either turn this, the feature on and off and you kind of just have to skim through it and find which one is down there. They're pretty good about explaining what each one means. And again, I'll show at the end, I'll kind of point to their website because they do have some good tutorials and some visuals that are good. Let's see, are there any other questions? Nothing yet. Thank you. Okay, sure. So let's talk about effective use of chat. So both meetings and webinars have a chat feature. It's important to know where the chat feature is located. And one thing I do say, and even for myself who uses Zoom considerably a lot, is it such a common error that sometimes you have to look and see who you're actually sending a message to. So today we have it set to where it goes to just us. All your questions are going to us. Um, so it's not going publicly on a big stream. Um, however, if you had it set to where it could go to everyone, both attendees and panelists could see it. So these are some options that you can set. So when you open your chat box, there's a little drop down menu and you can click your option. It's important to take a look at that 
before entering your, your question and then hitting your enter key. But so we just want to highlight that. Also, I just want to do a quick discussion about mute. We're all muted via a control on the panelist side. You will be unable to unmute unless we allow you to. And this is typically just to, to prevent distractions or auxiliary noise. However, if you are in a meeting, the mute control is typically up to the attendee. So thinking back to the contextualization I shared earlier, if, for example, you are meeting with family, the tendency is either to talk over each other, we can liken this to everyone unmuted, or give each other space to talk where everyone but the speaker is muted. In much the same way, use mute effectively to allow background noise to not interfere with socialization. And it also gives some privacy if you don't want attendees to hear a conversation happening in the background and so forth. And so if you're in the position of hosting a, a meeting and maybe someone's new to Zoom, it's always, I think, a nice thing to share that, you know, here's a mute button. Don't feel like you have to keep it on if you don't want to or you're walking away or your dog is barking in the background, etc. But at the same time, you can also keep it on because it just gives that realistic nature of everyone joining in together with their, their background noise. So just know that there's, there's options and use it effectively for what you need it to do. And the mute icon, unfortunately, in Zoom is a little small, but if you are concerned, always check for that crucial diagonal line through the icon, um, as you can see here with the mute tab. And I think someone had asked this earlier. So another fun feature that is worth pointing out if you're able to use your video features, again typically in meetings, is the virtual background feature. Sometimes there is a system requirement. I've had it where I've pulled it up and it will say that I don't have the right upgraded software to do that. It usually will make a note and prompt a message for you. And again I'll show in a moment where you can find the specifications to make sure you have the right either computer or software operating system that's doing everything that it needs to do. But the nice feature of Zoom's virtual background is that it doesn't require a green screen. This is especially useful for security, privacy, or if you're in a situation where you may not want someone to know where you are currently, or as simple as not wanting to show a pile of dirty dishes behind you. It's also fun because you can be in a space at the beach with, a, with your favorite movie characters, so forth. So where you're gonna find that feature is where I'd mentioned earlier with those audio visual controls. There's a start video feature and when you click the little tiny arrow next to it, there will be a choose a virtual background. And it's going to lead you into a box that looks very much like this. This will be the full settings for Zoom. Um, no, there's actually other settings within here. I'll just explain specifically virtual background, but as you can see that there's other features within the space. This is more about using it, be interacting with the space currently than it is the actual setup, but just know that this also is available to you. Images are not going to be there automatically. Usually we'll just say none. Uh, but if you do searches on Zoom backgrounds or something where it's like space background or cat background or whatever it interests you or specific images, you can typically find some nice high quality images that you can save to your computer and add to your virtual background library. So I have some things maintained within my virtual background and they're just there ready to go for even later. So you don't have to keep uploading them every single time, which is a very nice feature. So at this point, before I go into even setting up, are there any questions? Nothing so far in chat, but I will happily interrupt you whenever we do get a question. <laughs> okay, sounds good. So let's say you are wanting to set up your own Zoom meeting. A little bit about that. So you can start here. It's just zoom.us is our main website. Currently, Zoom has it where you can sign up for a free account and they have the following components or limitations. Currently, there's no limit to number of meetings. Um, it is important to know it is a meeting style only, no webinar style, no presentation style. Now, that doesn't mean you can't potentially emulate a presentation style program within a meeting space, but just know it's probably going to be more for your just casual situations, but I think some people have been using them for other 
maybe work-related reasons. So just to keep that in mind. And you are limited to 40 minutes if there are three or more participants. Otherwise, if it's just a one-on-one, -on -one, it usually is unlimited. I'm gonna just do a brief note on best practices for security. This is usually a concern that comes up for a lot of people. And I'm going to say with a disclaimer, I'm not an info security expert. Um, and I put here a link to a current letter that comes from the executives of Zoom and they were explaining within their letter some key features of how to use the security set, uh, settings within Zoom. Um, so it's a letter, but at the end, and I'll show you in a moment what it looks like, has that letter, it has some features laid out specifically in a document, which is very helpful. Zoom bombing is probably not as prevalent as it was, but it still happens. I think the thing that you really need to know is that if you're setting or joining up a program, it's important to understand the features within Zoom. And I think a lot of the Zoom bombing issues were stemmed from exploitation of user IDs. And so what does that mean? Each person that signs up for an account is issued a unique ID number that can be used to generate meetings. And again, if you go back to the visualization I offered earlier about meetings, this will assist you with making some security considerations. So if you were hosting a meeting, say at an outdoor gazebo in a park, you would probably expect other park goers to be around or wandering in your space or maybe chatting with people that are attending. The same would happen in a virtual environment if you were sharing your meeting link and ID number within a broad space too. So a lot of the things that happen within Zoom are very similar to what you would see in real life. But as an information professional, I always recommend you become in charge of your own learning. And again, we'll send these links afterwards, but here's a link, some links that have tutorials. Um, I put together a curated list of articles, um, things, everything from security to if you have accessibility concerns, um, there's an article in there. And there's also a virtual book a librarian service that we offer in the library system. So if you wanted to do more one on one work with us, you could fill out this form. And we actually do use Zoom in order to have a meeting with you. There's a nice tutorial on there that Hannah actually put together. And you can um, have a conversation with us virtually. You could also use that time to maybe test out some of your features. It would be a meeting style too. So if this is something of interest and maybe you want to practice before you create a program for your, your family or attend a meeting and you just want to kind of get a sense of how it feels before you do that, that's an option for you as well. And are there any questions at this point before I take you to some other resources? Let me peruse chat for a moment. I believe we do have a few. Um, um, if you want to answer this one first while I look through chat a little bit longer, is it possible for a participant to set up a virtual background or is that just an option for the host? Um, everyone, if they're not in this particular setting would be able, to, well, you should be able to see the feature, I believe at the bottom when you say start video, but it's not, since the video features have been shut off, you may not see that as an option, but generally, yes, you would be able to, especially in a meeting style, let me pause and see if I can get out of this particular. I'm going to pull it up. Okay. I'm going to pull up the Zoom material so that you can see them as well. So the Zoom website, zoom.us, has some information here. I think what's been the most helpful are some of these resources on the side. Click that. 
The Zoom Help Center is pretty comprehensive. They have everything from getting started to the audio video sharing. Let me see, I think that was. Diana, are you meaning to show the site right now on the screen or are you meaning to show the PowerPoint? Because currently I just see the PowerPoint. Hmm, fun. Let me stop share. Let me share my screen now and see if that does it. Does that work? That's it. Perfect. Yay, Thank you. Good. Okay. Quirky feature of the pause share. Okay. So here is the website. How I went to there is zoom.us. Ultimately, that is where you would download the initial software. But on the right hand side, there's some resources. Um, FAQs, but I'll just go to the video tutorials. What's nice here is that there's a running log of all different kinds of training. There's some that are already created, so you can watch them now, and they also have some live ones as well. They'll explain a little bit about the meeting controls. Jog my memory, what were some other questions we had specifically to show? Um, we did have, I, I'm, I'm not super familiar with um, kind of how tech support works with, with Zoom, but there is a patron that mentioned um, when they select account information, it brings them back to the main screen, but they're not logged in. Um, we tried to get some, some clarification. Uh, let me see what they said back. This attendee said there is an option to sign in with Google. When I select this, the next screen shows my Gmail account. When I select that, it returns me to the main Zoom menu, but they are still not logged in. Do you know if that's a bug or is that by design or I'm unfamiliar with it, unfortunately. Me too. Let me to so Google to Zoom integration maybe and look and see if maybe I've not tried where it would do that. I know it's an option that when you create something you can save to a Google Calendar and maybe somehow there's an integration within there. Let's see. Signing in. Okay, so it says open Google Calendar. I don't know if it's worth clarifying if that maybe is the issue. We can always unmute somebody if they want to explain. Are there any other questions that had come up? I think we've answered most of them. Uh, I will keep reading through chat if something comes up. Sure. Okay. So while we're on the internet, I will go ahead and show you our blog. So that is planolibrarylearns.org. I believe it would have been sent in your reminder, possibly. There was a link to a current tutorial I had done about getting started. So pretty basic tutorial. But we do currently have a blog with that video embedded. And there's also some reading for you as well. Some of them are just kind of more fun and interesting um, and a little bit about security as well. So that's another uh, source of information for you. Um, if there's, if you've not heard about Zoom fatigue, it's kind of an interesting topic, but for many people that probably stare at their computers all day, after a while it can be very tiring, and I'm sure some of you probably miss more social and in-person interaction as well. Is there a resource on the Zoom website for polls, how to set them up, and is that something maybe you could um, explore in this webinar? Sure, okay. So polling for webinars, polling for meter, um, meetings comes out of the Zoom Help Center. 
So what's interesting about polls is that there's a couple ways you can do it. You can either um, add polls before your webinar. So when you have a setup, when you, when you have the setup side, you're going to see these options. There is a poll tab and then you can set them up like this. And I, I don't remember if there was specifically a limit to 10 questions per poll, but you can also have multiple polls. So if you had a, maybe like a head, head topic of experience with Zoom, then you could have subtopics within it. Would you be able to repeat the last, uh, about a sentence or two, because I think for me, your mic distorted a little bit and dropped out. Okay, sure. Thanks for letting me know. Okay, so for both polls and webinars and meetings in the setup, there, is, there are different tabs and there is a polls tab. And what you can do is set it up in advance and you'll see a little box look pretty much like this. You can put a main topic and then have multiple questions within and it looks like there's a limit of 10 questions per poll, but you can also have multiple polls as well. And so that is for the webinar. Let me go back to the meetings one. And is that poll option a premium feature or would that be available with a uh, free account? Let me check for the meetings. Since meetings are really the free one, let me confirm. Now we do have a paid for account that we use when we do our programming. It's a good question, let's confirm. Creating a poll. Yeah, what we might need to do is research that to confirm if that is a special feature, in which case we could get some contact information and I can get back to that person. I don't remember if it was specifically a specific feature. There are, let me check some premium features. Um, hey, Diana, mm -hmm. um, I just created a free account um, and I tried to set up a meeting and I didn't see it as a polls as a feature that I could do. Okay, so then that's good to know. So then you would have to have more of a premium set up for that. You know, and as a disclaimer too, we do use Zoom generally because it's pretty easy to set up, but obviously there are multiple different conferencing softwares out there. Let's see. What other questions? I have a question, let's see. Would you be able to show how to set up your own meeting slash session? Sure. Okay. Let me, hopefully this doesn't make you too nauseous. I'm just going to scroll through the, their website and look up the setup. Let's see. Help Center. So usually to do it, you will set up with your own Zoom account. And they do give you some information. I will make a caveat. I know this Zoom is very helpful, but there are not a ton of visuals. You almost have to watch the tutorials typically to get a really good sense of what's in there. But let me see if I can find a good image that explains what it looks like. I'll try that quick user guide. Okay, so that was based on the Zoom Help Center, the scheduling a meeting. It, it looks very much like this. Sorry, it's a very terribly small tab, but basically it's going to give you a chronological order with the most, um, the upcoming one at the top. So it's going to go from oldest to newest at the end. And basically what you'll do is schedule a new meeting. It's going to give you some different options. They're pretty basic. You'll get a link that you can send and copy the invitation to. And you can either email it or you can set it up to where you would email someone or you can um, integrate it where you can email it to like a group. Would you be able to explain the difference between scheduling a meeting and doing something like an instant meeting? 
instant meeting. Good question. I don't think we set up an instant meeting for us. I think it's just, let's see. I think the difference would be that normally for a scheduled meeting, you're gonna go back and use that scheduled meeting feature. You'll set a time. Uh, but theoretically, since you have your own ID, you could have someone meet immediately. So you'd have to use your personal meeting ID. And then it looks like you'll just press new meeting and do um, an immediate meeting that way. So I think normally, to me, I think that's almost their version of a conference call is what I'm probably going to gather. And so it's probably less like more of a formal meeting you set up in advance, but it would, it is something you'd have to do on the back end and it would require you having an account and setting up with your personal meeting ID. There's some information here. So I think if I recall, it's not set up automatically to use your personal ID to set up meetings. So you will have to go ahead and Find, and again, I'm sorry, this is a terribly small note. You'll have to use this ID for instant meetings and then that way you can set it up. So maybe if you're an admin or in that kind of role or maybe this little person in your family that sets all the meetings up, that might be an option. I think the thing to note is just making sure that you're sharing that meeting in a, in a way that only those people can probably see it just for security probably would be the best thing to do. Are there any other questions? Nothing so far. Okay. I'll pause for a while. In case there are more questions, I'm going to go to our website. So planolibrary.org. And we have some different tabs up here that you can go to. If you click about, there is our help from a librarian suggest an item feature. And we have our book a librarian. So we have our instruction guide that shows you how to join an appointment, which is probably not terribly unlike what you did today to get into this particular program. But most importantly, there's the link where you can set up a form. You would need a Plano card number in order to do that with us. And we can meet with you virtually over even more details in Zoom if you'd like. So if maybe you want to try something out, you're welcome to do that with us. Real quick, um, what are the, do you know what the costs are associated with Zoom? I know there's a free version that has, I believe, certain limitations and then the premium versions. Would you be able to highlight on that? Sure. Let me see. Um, oops. It's not right on. Let me go back to there was one where was a price when I first logged in. Here, I'll stop share for a moment. Let me quickly do a search and make sure I can find that correct one because I think there was a pricing list somewhere. Okay. Okay. So zoom.us forward slash pricing. This is the free one that's explains all those features and then it looks like there's some that have a monthly cost related to it and let's see i wonder if they confirm polls is there any other questions related to the cost Nothing yet. Okay. Okay. So here in the basic free one, I'll explain that 
you've got some different views, you can do the screen share, you can do the virtual background. There's also a waiting room feature that basically allows you to enter a space if you're hosting it and then admit people from your end. So maybe you need to set up a PowerPoint or show a slideshow, then you can do that and then let people in. Kind of almost like if you had the door shut and they were opening the door and letting them in. And then here are some other features on the web conferencing. Group collaboration features. and then security. And then those breakout rooms are nice if you have to facilitate maybe small conversation groups as well. And that's very, that's only specific to meetings, just a note. So this particular setup does not have that in there. Would you be able to show how you can break into those, I'm sorry, use those breakout rooms features. Is that something see, you can show? Let me see if I can just pull up, maybe they've got the, a good image to do that. Breakout room. Basically, if you're the host in a meeting, you're going to see an icon that will, let's see if they show it. It's gonna have a little, it almost looks like little boxes together. I guess they won't show it. And basically, you'll click it. Now, you do have to set it up in advance to allow for it. This kind of walks you through it pretty well. Unfortunately, it's very wordy, this particular tutorial. Um, but in a sense, what you can do is it's going to pop up with a box, and you can set multiple rooms. So you can do, as, I don't remember if there was a limitation, but you could do two, but you could do more than that depending and then as the host you can pick individual names that are of people that are participating and you can move them into those breakout rooms and then what happens is a little like a uh, pause happens and then you're moved into that space and at some point if the host asks asks everyone to come back together there'll be a pause and then everyone will come back into the space i will say it's a lot easier to explain maybe in where you can practice it one-on-one -on -one. If that's a feature you're interested in doing, I would definitely consider you filling out a form for our book a librarian. And we can kind of show you how that would work in practice in advance. So if you want to kind of see what it feels like, it's a lot easier to kind of see because Zoom does have good tutor tutorials, but they're not exactly visual. Any other? I'm keeping an eye on chat. Nothing, nothing so far. Okay. Well, that basically is going to bring us to the end of our program. So I'll go through and see if I can pull up anything else. I'll get our links page back up again. So that's not helping me at all. Go back through quickly and our resources here like I shared is planolibrary.org and our blog is the planolibrarylearns.org and if you have any other questions feel free to ask and otherwise that is the end of our Zoom program. Thank you again for attending. Hopefully you got some information out of this. Like I said, feel free to fill out a book of librarian if you wanna do some more specific features with us. And again, I'll share this PowerPoint with the links directly in and afterwards. And it usually takes a few days for us to kind of edit a recording, but we'll also send those out to all attendees and those that registered. <coughs> Bye.
hi, Jane. <laughs> I saw the hand. <laughs> Thank you again for attending. Hopefully this information was helpful. And like I said, let us know if you need any other assistance. And hopefully we'll get to see you at one of our programs later. Looks like there might be one more question. Oh, sure. I think they're typing as we speak. She says, I have signed up with a different account before. She gets emails. But then was notified I did not visit. Is this a Zoom account or a, or a library card account? Library account. Ah. Let's hmm. see. They wonder what? I wonder if we have the latest contact information on her library account. Yeah, I would say we can have you contact one of our buildings, whatever is your closest location. And that way we can just take a look and see. Um, I'm not sure if there was any, we can just confirm maybe if there was anything specific on your account, but that's something that I would do. And then I think I saw a question about Microsoft Teams. That is a good question. So we actually don't use Microsoft Teams uh, in our city at this point. But um, if you want some resources on that, it's possible that you could go ahead and do that with a librarian so we can call together some things. There's a lot of similar features from my own experience, um, but it integrates quite a bit. So it really depends on how your organization uses it. Um, because I think some people will have it use their phone conferencing and you can save files and things like that. But we would also be happy to pull some materials together for you on that if you need. And then um, for, I think I saw, is there a question about using um, speaking? Yes, we can. And if, if we want, we can always, let's see. We set it up, but we can also unmute anybody. But generally, I would say that um, meetings, I think they're the settings where you would automatically be able to talk as well. But yes, to Tony's question, we can we can definitely you can unmute yourself if we if we give the permissions to. So it is a possibility. Let's see if there's any other questions. Well, thank you again for attending. And hopefully you come visit us via our website or virtually at a program or contact us for that book of librarians so that we can pull together some more resources for you or show you around Zoom a little bit more, whatever you need. <laughs>